What is the gold-rimmed skull of a British officer doing in Menshia Museum in Ashanti region? Today we talk about the Battle of Nsamankor, which took place 200 years ago in 1824. What's the significance of this battle between the Ashantis and the British? The answers, as always, provided by our favorite historian, Yao Anochi Frimpong. Always good to talk to you. Welcome. Let's start from the beginning. What exactly does Nsamankor mean? Nsamankor. When you read Ghana's two foremost historians, mm -hmm. F.K. Boa, Edu Boahim, and even Ward, A Short History of Ghana, mm -hmm. they will tell you that in Samanko was the name of the village where the battle that took place in January 1824 was fought. Others will tell you that that was the village where Sir Charles McCarthy slept the night before the war. A real research has shown that these historians, especially our own, F.K. Boa and Edu Boyan, did armchair philosophizing. In fact, the battle was fought at the village of Bonsaso, along the river Bonsa that flows into the Ancobra. And there is no town, no community, no village in the western region, Wasa area, where the battle was fought, called in Samanko. It acquired the name from the Akan or the Chi word in Samanko. In Samanko, like we are fighting ghosts. In Saman is ghost. Saman is, is ghost. ghost. And, and Kun is yes. fight, conflict. In Samanko. They are fighting ghosts. Ghosts. Who's ghost? That is it. Today we are going to do <laughs> it. See, what happened was that when such as Makati decided to carry the war yeah. to the Ashantis. And let's just back it up again. Who is Sir Charles McCarthy? Sir Charles McCarthy was the British governor of Sierra Leone. And at that time, the four British quality territories or protectorates or possessions, Gambia, Sierra Leone, Gold Coast, Nigeria, had one governor. And the seat of administration was... Freetown, Sierra Leone. So he administered these possessions from uh, Freetown, Sierra Leone. Then in or about 1821, the British Parliament passed a law to bring the trading activities of the African company, the Royal African Company, mm -hmm. under the British government so that the profit going to individual British traders would now be channeled to the government. So consolidation. To consolidate everything with the government sitting on it because they realized that it had become so profitable. And therefore, the governor would be asked to move in to the Gold Coast in the middle of these territories in order to oversee trading activities in Cape Coast, mm -hmm. and for that matter, the entire southern part of the Gold Coast. So this was Sechas Makad. Mm -hmm. Now to continue the story, the act was passed in 1821, and he himself had arrived on the coast in 1822. That was the time he arrived. Now, what had happened was that before such as McCarthy, the British had never fought the Ashanti, never fought the Ashanti. And even though Ashanti was a very powerful tribe or kingdom, it was always in the hinterland, not much bothered about what took place along the coast. If anything, they would just casually buy or sell goods at Elmina or Cape Coast and go back home 
but they never had an effective administration along the coast, except to say that in the time of uh, Osei Tutu, when uh, Intimi Jakari was the king of Denchla, they had defeated the Denchlas and they had taken in the famous battle of Feyase, 1698, thereabout, and taken the notes of the Elmina castle. So they had become more or less the landlords, but they had no effective administration there. They never knew what was actually happening on the coast. And no Asantehine had, in fact, visited the coast before then. Then, 1805, something took place. The Asen then made up of Asen uh, Atandansu and then Asen Apimenim were seven the Ashantis. And the Asen Apimenim uh, Atandansu chief was Amuadai and then the uh, Atandansu is divided between uh, Kojotubu and Koiku Aputai. Now one of the sub-chiefs of Amuadai died and as usual he will be buried with plenty of gold Somebody from the other side was there. He saw it and then in the night desecrated the grave. So Amuadai would report the matter to their Omayene, the Asantehine. The Asantehine invited all of them to settle the matter. And he ruled that Kojotibu and Kojoku Aputai should pay back everything to Amuadai. They refused and hurried back home, raised an army to meet the messengers of the Asantehine and chopped off their heads and even fought Amuadai and defeated him. So naturally, the Asantehine would come in with the heavy Ashanti army. He routed the Asen people and still pursued Kojotibu and Koku Aputai. They had gone to Bremane Sikuma. The moment that Santehine got there, they moved on to Abra, where at that time the Fante Confederation was having a very important meeting. And these two men lodged with them for safety. That Santehine sent a message to the Fante Confederation that his intention was not to fight anybody but just to get these two men and punish them. Now, the Fantis too had never engaged the uh, Ashantis before. And along the coast, the most sophisticated and the most feared people were the Fantis. They were close to the English. You know, they had whatever they needed. And you know, those days they even had the famous Cape Coast schools. You know, so, they underrated, in fact, grossly underrated the might of Ashanti and called them savage people. That is, the moment we hand over these men to the Ashantis, they will kill them. So we will give them the protection they need. And if the Ashantis will not go away, we will fight them and beat them. So you see, that was an understatement because at all that time, the Ashantis had always been fighting the cheese speaking tribes that were within the Pra of Finn Basin. And we are talking about the Denchira, uh, the Adanse, we are talking about Achim, we are talking about the Wasa people, and then the Asen, mm. these five main groups, if you can add Chifo. Uh, they had never crossed the Pra to fight the Fantis, and the Fantis too never knew the strength and the might of the Ashantis. So did the Fantis bring in the British into this con conflict? Yes, eventually the British will come because when they defeated the uh, Fantis, they ran back down to Anomabo and then Cape Coast and Mankesim. Mm -hmm. And the Ashantis pursued them. So it was at Mankesim, as you know, that the Asantehine, who was then called Osei Tutu Kwame Esibe, that was his name, welded himself into the sea and said that, oh, I have defeated all human beings along the coast, and even the fishes in the sea are afraid of me. Look at where I've got to, and I haven't seen a single fish coming to fight me. And he took the appellation Bonshu. 
So that was how Dashante started having the name Bonsu. Bonsu, you know, the whale. The whale. The whale is yes. the biggest fish the biggest in fish. the sea. Yeah. And he saw that he was like the whale. Bonsu. So he took so his name was shortened to become Nana Osei Bonsu. Bonsu. Osei Bonsu. Now when he got to the coast, the British governor there at Anomabo, Colonel Torre, entered into a treaty with him whereby the, Asha, the Fantis he had defeated were made to serve him indirectly. Mm -hmm. They would directly serve the white people. But the notes of all the uh, English forts and castle would now go to that's that Santa Helene. So this cove fought, and then uh, that's Metal Cross, mm -hmm. and then Fort Williams, Anomabo, and then Cape Coast Castle would come into the hands of the Asante. And all the lands in the Fanti area, whatever tribute hitherto being paid to the chiefs of Fanti land, now directed to the Asante. Hino. So it was almost like the Asante was a landlord and he was receiving rent, from, annual rent yes, from these from people. Yes, from the English people. Okay. All because of that grave error made by the Fanti confederation. Not to hand over those two chiefs. Not because these are chief speaking people mm -hmm. who have their own problem. And you know how the chief language is, mm -hmm. and which was completely distinct from the Fanti one. Mm -hmm. So they've come, they have their own palaver. And the people have come to you say, please, own them up. And if you hear the whole genesis, you see that the Shantis had a case. You served me, they have gone to desecrate, desecrate somebody's grave, pay back, you say no, and you raise an army to fight me. And when I want you, you, this man, have kept those two fugitives, not ready to hand them over to me. So it was something of a big insult mm -hmm. to the Shantis. And eventually, they, loved, they lost their freedom to the Ashanti people. So that became the end momentarily of the matter. Ashantis went back home and then about 1817, several years later, the chief of German called Nanakojo Edinkra had made for himself a golden stool. Please, whenever you hear German, what should come to mind is Doma. Doma is, in fact, a, a, a part of the German people. Mm -hmm. The Doma people were living in Kumasi, Suntresu. And they were very powerful people. They fought the Ashantis under Obri Yabua and defeated the Ashantis. Now, when Osei Tutu was brought in to become the successor to Obiri Yabua, he had learned what had happened to his uncle and the fact that they were already serving Denchira. Denchira could not help them in the war and Doma had killed their king. So, with his coming, he had a double or dual agenda mm -hmm. to fight immediately defeat or avenge the death, better word, avenge the death of his uncle, and then uh, remotely fight for their independence from danger. Mm -hmm. And Sansa Sreku, the king of Akwemu, gave him about 700 men, and he also came with the famous advisor, Okonfo Anochi. What many people did not do was that Ancestor Sreku advised them that they should first reach Accra and buy the best of state-of-the-art guns from the Christian Boy Castle, the dance, which they did. So when they entered uh, Ashanti land, I mean, present-day Kumasi, they were already on top because of the nature of weapons they Technology, had, yeah. which the Domas did not. So they defeated the Doma people under their leader, Doma Kusi. So the Doma people, indeed, the Dom Doma, the meaning is just Odoma, Doma, they left the place and crossed to the present day German. What does Odoma mean? Odoma, 
all those who love me come and join me oh, to form love, the new love town love town yes but well, they were part of the Adansi people mm. who moved to Akwamu and then came back to settle at Suntraso to form Odomai. Or later they had to leave. And when they got to uh, Bontuku area, the people there asked them to return home because you fought the Ashanti people and killed their king. They also fought you later and have killed your king. So scores have been settled already, mm -hmm. so go back. And they said, we will not go back. And they said, "Why would Jawa my home? You have left it's your left land, land to come and live here." German. So they had a new name, German. Mm. Left your land. Left your land to settle here. Mm. So German and uh, do, uh, uh, what do you call Doma? There's virtually no difference between them, mm. except that one part, the German part, is now in Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. and the Doma part in is in Ghana. Apart from that, no difference. The same people. The same people. How do you link them to the Battle of Samanko? Linking them, what happened was that. Uh, after distance, I said that the Akin, Edinkra had made for himself a golden stool. The German people. The German people. And they, because they knew that Shantis, they have a golden stool. You too, you can make one. That Shantis he went and collected it easily. And then he made another one bigger and better than even the golden stool that Shantis have got. So that Shantis went again. And he said, no way this time. And a very heavy battle was fought. Shanti lost heavily, but they won the war and took the golden stool away and then succeeded in killing uh, Edinkra. How it is learned is that nobody knew how it happened. The coastal states, which were following the development, you know, every war has got battles, series of battles. So possibly the first few battles fought where Ashantis were losing men was what was transmitted to the coastal people, the Fantis. Mm -hmm. And then they started teasing the Ashanti traders. And that, huh, you think you are warriors, you can fight everybody. Look at what the Germans have done to you. The Asantehine had this. The Asantehine had this. And decided to come down to Fantis land to punish the Fantis for teasing him. The British wouldn't want trouble. So they met the, Fante, the Ashantis and in 1819 signed a treaty with the Asantehine that these are things that should not bring war between brothers. You don't have to disrupt it. And the Asantehine, a very peaceful man, understood. What was his name? Ose, this same Ose Bonsu. Bonsu, Okay. He understood and he retreated. Mm -hmm. That was 1719. Then in 17, uh, so 18, 18, 18, 17, mm -hmm. then in 1819, uh, the treaty was 1817. Mm -hmm. Two years later, the British sent an officer called Dupuy to go and live in Kumase and serve as his advisor, who would explain to him coastal uh, psychology so that it is not all things that you hear that will make you go and fight. And then the agreement was in furtherance of the earlier one with Kendall Torrain, that the area belongs to you. That was why the Ashantis were coming, because mm. when I'm going to fight, you are supposed to raise an army to join me. You didn't join me, and you sit there as my subjects, and then tease me that I have lost the war. So this was it. So they had to send Dupuy there to ensure that he would always be talking to the Asantehine, and then there will be peace. Then peace also prevailed for some time until the Asantehine realized in 1821-1822 that when he descended down to fight the Fantis, the people supported the Fantis, mm -hmm. the Achim people supported the Fantis, and then the Wasa people supported the Fantis. And these people should be should have been with the Asantehine. Asantehine. The so it was like tribes. they were only waiting for an opportunity to assert their mm -hmm. independence. Okay. So when they saw the white people coming in, they thought that the white would overpower the Ashanti. So they mistakenly supported the Fante uh, British coalition. So his aim was to go and punish them and bring them back to the Ashanti confederacy. And then Around so this was like an internal fight. Internal fight, which initially had nothing to do, do with the British. With the British. How did they come in? They came in because 
1821, as we know, the British Parliament, having discovered how lucrative the coastal trade, hmm. the Gold Coast trade had become, decided to take over the entire administration of the trade instead of the uh, traders themselves mm. doing their own thing. So it's like government coming inside and taking over the business of private people. So it's nationalization. nationalization. So they decided to nationalize the British activities mm -hmm. on the Gold Coast. Mm. So to do that, they decided to send Sir Charles McCarthy, as you have said, governor of Sierra Leone, to take over the whole affairs. Now when Charles McCarthy was returning, to, sorry, was uh, coming to the Gold Coast, he had a word with Dupuy. The man who was advising the Santini. He had meanwhile been transferred to England. Dupuy. Yes, he okay. had gone back to England. So he met him in England and explained to him the Gold Coast terrain, everything that was happening here. Almost like intelligence. Intelligence. Mm. And advised him to be careful of the Ashantis, not to fight them, not to disturb them. But for as long as there was peace between Ashantis and the British, trade would flourish mm. and he would have his own peace. So he should go and follow that. He thanked him, came to Gold the coast. coast. When he arrived at Cape Coast, something different happened. The moment he mentioned what Dupuy had told him, the people of Cape Coast, and I mean his own English people, did not like Dupuy. Because when he went to stay in Kumasi, the Asante Hini came to trust him and made him his friend. And they felt that he was a source of betrayal for the English people. So whatever advice he had given to McCarthy, they made him to eschew everything. So it means that McCarthy was just going to do the opposite. Of what Dupuy advised. But what he did not know was that the British traders did not like his presence in the country because they had their own trade governors. Of course. They had their commanders, they had their police, their own administration, yeah, which so they were running in the forest. And now everything because, was going to be nationalized. Yes. Yeah. Now everything is going to be nationalized. You are the head of the nation, Representing the ambassador. The British, British, so definitely. They will not be able to say anything, mm -hmm. but they will be prepared to jettison you as much as possible and as early as possible. So that was why they made him to know that the Ashantis are nobody. Oh, the Ashantis, they are nobody. If you sit down to uh, pen down people that could scare you, give you problems, don't add the Ashantis and you can still go to sleep and wake up peacefully. So that was what was on his mind. At the same time, he had also learned about the various Ashanti incursions to the coast, the coast. and the damage they had caused. Mm -hmm. Because at one point, you know that some people in the, uh, uh, who took refuge in the Anomabo fought, 2,000 of them were sent into slavery and the booty shared between Kandal Torain and the Asantehene. And that was why the Asantehene made the famous statement. I took the English for my friends because I saw their object was to trade only and they did not care for the people. Who was Colonel Torain? Just remind us a little bit. The, the, the British governor at the uh, Anumabo Castle. Indeed, okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So he respected the Ashanti and he felt trade must go on. And indeed they had come to the coast because of trading That's and they it. didn't care for the people. Now, Sir Chasmat Kati comes in with an intention to protect trade, to care for the people, and to be able to do that, you should defeat the savage Ashantis. Mm -hmm. So, in late 1823, up to January 1824, he decided to cross the Pra and meet the Ashanti army. McCarthy. Makati, mm -hmm. and to meet the Ashanti army. The Ashantis had sent a large army to go and fight the Wasa people. So that was why the war this time was not on the Asin Adanse part, 
Because you will see that any time Ashanti would want to come to the coast, you would use the Asim Praso road. But this time it was the Wasas who had given help to the Fantis. So they were, they are, they are, they are, their attention was more westward than the center. And the British also decided to find out where the uh, Ashantis were in order to trace them. In fact, he had an army of 2,000 men. McCarthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And left it under uh, the commander and decided to go on an expedition with 500 men to repel the Ashantis and chase them to Kumasi. Did the Fantic Confederacy give him uh, support in terms of men as well? They didn't give him support. They promised him support. Mm. They promised him support. So when later on Spice informed him that the Ashanti army was in its thousands and you have 2,000, that 2,000 was even reserved in the camp. And where you are, strictly on Wasa land, mm -hmm. which is so close to where the Ashantis had camped. You have only 500 mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. So you should be very careful. Therefore, he sent a messenger to inform the 2,000 soldiers to quickly join him on Wasa land. And it is said that there were heavy rains that week. And the messenger lost his way because many of the rivers had overflown their banks mm -hmm. and roads had changed routes. And so the man lost his way and could not get to the army. And then there was a chief there called Afro, who had also promised to help him, realized that you know, the Ashantis are coming to fight me. So if I decide to help you, then it would even worsen my situation. Because I am finding a way of propitiating my master so that there will be peace between my master and my good self. Now you come in asking for help. I can help you only when I need your help so that we fight Ashanti. But yeah. I'm not ready mm -hmm. to fight Ashanti. That time is not now. No, not mm -hmm. now. So rather, and that's how the name Nsamanko came in. With very few soldiers and uh, the ammunition also very, very short. In the night when the British army, say Charles McCarthy and his army were fast asleep and because the number was so small, he had scattered them, you know, to give he himself protection in order that they would not uh, annihilate all of them. It is only when you have less, if they had the uh, 2,000 men, the comfort of the 2,000 men, mm -hmm. then even in pockets, you can have 500 here, 500, 500. Mm -hmm. He didn't have that luxury. And so he just separated the army so mm -hmm. that the Ashantis would not know exactly where they, where they were. They were. Did they succeed? He would fail. You see, in the night, because the Wasas knew the geography of their own area, they could easily tell where the troops were lodging, sleeping. So we are told that in the night, the Wasa people organized themselves into small bands and they went to stab the British, the British. soldiers, mm. kill them without any gunshot being heard and without any form of noise to make anybody know that there was war going on. Mm. That was why the following day, the soldiers left, those who were left, said, ah, yaku nsamanku. So that you don't hear anybody fighting. But they are dying. But your people have died. So it's ghosts. So you were fighting ghosts. <laughs> and so when the British recorders, you know, were making records of this war, they stated the Samanko oh, battle. Oh, oh, oh. They didn't understand the word. They didn't understand. Then Samanko battle. Then Samanko battle. As they were told, then Samanko battle. Then Samanko battle. Then Samanko battle. The battle really took place along the uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The banks of the Bonsa River and was recorded so. So the relevance of our lecture today is nothing more than the fact that our historians misled us for us to believe that there was a war 
that took place in a town called mm -hmm. Samanko. Okay. I spoke to the chief of Bonsasu, mm -hmm. and he showed me Sir Charles Makati's sword, which he has now gone to deliver to the Oman you know, of Wasem mm -hmm. So when you go to Benso at the Wasa Palace, mm -hmm. they will show you the uh, Charles Makati sword. So, not far from the oil plantation, right? The that area, Benso. Ben, Benso, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, very Benso oil palm mm -hmm. plantation. Mm -hmm. That is it, that Western area. Region. Oh, you're also very good. Thank man. you, sir. <laughs> yes, that's where it is. You know, so the, the, the most important thing we are all learning today is mm -hmm. that there was a, an Insamanko battle, mm -hmm. but not the battle of Insamanko. No, it was the circumstances during the fat battle that led people to describe Give it, it as that such. name, that is all. Because of the strategy, the That's war it. strategy that they used to That's defeat it. them. I understand the people, the, 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 the British troops and the Afanti allies were heavily rooted. They were rooted heavily because the number was very small. Yeah. The Wasais disappointed them. The Fantis could not join them because the messenger had lost his way. <laughs> and then the 2000 army was also stranded. And the Ashanti too, in fact, in fact such as Makati only became a victim of circumstances. The Ashantis also were not prepared to go and fight the British army, the 2000 soldiers, mm -hmm. even though they could have defeated them. Mm -hmm. The Ashantis were not prepared for that because their aim of coming down south was not the British. No, so it was only the British who unilaterally decided to cross over and fight Ashanti. So the British basically entered a fight between Fantis and Ashantis. Uh, Wasas and, and, yes, and Yes, Wasas, yeah, Denchila on the, one hand, uh, yeah. and then and the, the Ashanti, Ashanti people. That's all. And uh, the very people who are going to be punished, even they didn't take part in the war, because the moment this uh, killing took place, and such as Makati saw, he had lost mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And he heard Ashanti's blowing their trumpets mm -hmm. and coming, mm -hmm. and Wasa having completely retreated, he shot himself. So the Ashanti the army only found the dead body, chopped off the head, and took the skull to Kumasi. And it is on record that uh, the three days that they spent on the way before reaching Kumasi, uh, the missionaries who were then stationed, who recorded the site, the body was in the same form of preservation as if the man died just about an hour earlier mm. and did not understand the technology we had for the preservation. I believe now we have lost that preservation, that yeah. method of yeah. preservation. But they praised African ingenuity that when they saw the head, it was as fresh as if to say the man died only an hour earlier. Meanwhile, it was after the third day that they saw it. But that very day, the uh, British man, such as Makati, died. Uh, the Asantehini also died, in his case, from natural mm, causes. Mm. And some people say that he died out of shock, that he so much loved the British because of his trading relationship with Torain and had wanted to continue with them and was surprised that this man would kill himself when he had not planned to kill to him. Uh, <laughs> and as an elderly man, mm -hmm. he felt so sorry mm -hmm. about that. And before they realized, the man too was dead. Because at that time, we didn't have uh, hospitals and doctors to check. We cannot actually tell the cause of death. But the most important thing was that the moment they showed him the head, he also died. Around about the same time. And the, do you know the victors of this war? The British traders, the moment the British parliament heard about the demise of such as McCarthy, they decided to wind up their activities again. So the traders took advantage of that and then brought in their own governor, such as McCarthy, uh, sorry, Sir Captain George McLean. McLean. They took advantage of that mm -hmm. and brought in their own Governor Captain George McLean. And within a short time, they had been able to stabilize trade and they had made plenty of profit. And then the British government will hear it again and bring in Commander Hill to become the governor and reduce the status of McLean to judicial, judicial assessor. So you see the interests of the, the British. Interest of the interests were, were always <laughs> paramount. I understand that. The, so they made a lot of mistakes. They were 
first of all, they were heavily outnumbered by the Ashanti yes. forces. They tried to use music to 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 intimidate the the, the, the Ashantis. Well, they used music when they were. He saw that the number was limited. Mm -hmm. He tried to ginger them up to mm -hmm. put some confidence in them by mm -hmm. making them sing the British anthem. Mm -hmm. God save the king. Mm -hmm. And we are told that they played it masterfully. That small band mm -hmm. that was played it so much. But you know, war is not. We're not there to listen to music. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. But it was the first time that. Uh, uh, the Wasa people, because the Shantis were not there. Mm -hmm. The Wasas will hear mm -hmm. the, the music of the Union Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't help. So McCarthy's head, where where is it now? I understand it was lined with gold. You told and, the and, people, and, and, oh, you told the listeners. <laughs> uh, For those who, did, who, those who, who <laughs> just joined us. Mesia Palace. Yes, because they used, was, to drink, they used to drink from it? They, they, they used to in those days. Mm -hmm. I mean, like... When Napoleon Bonaparte mm -hmm. was defeated by the English, mm -hmm. his chamber pot was taken as a trophy. Mm -hmm. The English cleaned it nicely. Mm -hmm. And any time the British Navy was fighting, they drank champagne from it. From the chamber so, pot? Yes. And the Ashantis too, who did not know... <laughs> About Mata Napoleon. Yeah, they also knew what was meant by trophies of war. Of war. Yeah. So they added this trophy to that of... Uh, the king of Germany. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they chopped off his, his head. head as well. Yeah, and yeah. then Doma Kusi, so. and then that of Ntim Jakari. Mm -hmm. So they added this one too. So this is basically just a symbolic way of, of showing that we have dominated you. Yes. So we yes. have we've used your king's head or your commander's head as a cup yes. to drink the, water. The, the, that, uh, what is the significance of the the, the battle of Nsamonko? What should we learn from it 200 years after this battle took place? Uh, what we should learn about this, the first one is that it, it was the first time ever that the British had a confrontation with the Ashanti. The next thing that we would learn from it is that the Ashanti, the British will continue to harbor the pain of having a governor killed at the hands of People they underrated. So called they savages. Savages. They mm -hmm. were nobodies. <laughs> but Ashantis taught them a very bitter lesson. And it was the, the, the it was what will make the British and in fact the entire Europe to respect the Ashantis because we are told that around that period, Ashanti could raise an army of up to about fifty thousand soldiers. And that was what Western European powers like Germany. France and then England could raise. And in fact, recorders, historians say that around that time, they estimated the power, the might of Ashanti as equal to any one of the uh, Western European powers. And the only thing that would make Ashanti be defeated eventually, that's the 1874 Sagrenti War, would be superior weapons because they were making weapons mm -hmm. among themselves, the French, Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, English, Germans, their scientists were always making and improving yeah, upon it. Innovating and inventing. Yeah, when we did not know anything about it, mm. only when they brought it to the coast, then we that Ashanti would buy. Mm. And so there's no way they would give you the very powerful ones. And that was the only thing that would bring Ashanti down. If Ashanti had its own way of improving on technology, it would have helped them. In fact, People who were working for them as their artisans were the Ewe people. Do you know that to this day, the Ewe do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They look at the gun mm -hmm. and they are able to, to make it. Make it. Mm -hmm. They were doing it for the Ashantis mm -hmm. and then supplying to them so that uh, Ashantis were always get, would get weapons from the Dutch or from the Germans through the Ewe. And then the Ewe would improve upon it. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, would just look at it and make some. But improving upon it, was the technology the African didn't have. We lacked it, and that was our bane. So what's our lesson as 21st century Ghanaians, looking back 200 years um, into time? I would say that what, what the, the whites actually were not invisible. Mm -hmm. It was the first time the Ashantis got to know that, and the Fantis too mm -hmm. would get to know that the whites mm -hmm. were not invisible mm -hmm. because it was not only Charles McCarthy who was killed. That was has killed a lot of people. Yes, whether or not it was yes. inside. And then were killed, it quickly yeah. solved the problem between the Wasa and the Ashantis. Because the Wasa people told them that, look, 
Look at what we have done for you. Mm -hmm. In the night, we killed a lot of these people. We don't want to war on our land. You take the head of Chasmakati and go back to your country. We will serve you. And in fact, there was very big peace around that time. But we are supposed to learn this because at least uh, for an African army to defeat uh, the British army, and it will take up to 1874, about 50 years later, before the British could overcome Ashanti. It's something to be proud of. As always, thank you very much, Siyanoche uh, Frimpong, uh, for the deep dive into history. And so you know a bit, little bit more about the, the Battle of Insamon called There Is No Town. <laughs> it's just a description of how the battle went. Uh, but uh, what, did you, what did you find most striking about this particular uh, encounter with uh, our history? Put your comments down below. Let's have a conversation on uh, things historical. So we meet again in the next video. Take care of yourselves and God bless.